we're back in Montana, but we sure have a lot of rocks from around the world. Let's see what I brought back from Tucson. Okay, it's time to figure out where to put all these rocks that I brought back from the show. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is empty this bag of all these little geodes we got. These are geodes, I think, from Morocco, and Jim and I went through the barrel and we picked out the light ones so that every one of them probably has a nice crystal pocket inside of it. And um, got those from my Etsy store, so let's get rid of those. Here's one that either broke in transit or we got opened already. So I can show you how pretty those crystals are inside there. Isn't that neat? All right. This stuff is something called wave dolomite. And they had a gigantic specimen of this that in their display room that just blew me away. And I'm like, ooh, I gotta have some of that. So I got several different pieces of this. Here's the second piece that I got. It's gonna be really fun. And it takes a really nice polish too. So I can't wait to see what the slabs look like. And here is the final piece. You can see it actually kind of grows in layers and then you can see how it got crunched around and folded. So it just makes these fabulous, fabulous shapes. I am really excited about this material because I've never worked with it before. I've never really even seen it before. So I don't actually remember buying three different pieces of it, but apparently I liked it that much. This, I believe, is a piece of Cherry Creek and it's from China, if that's what it is. Um, it's just got some really nice shapes in it. Nice colors, nice patterns, and it's gonna make some nice slabs. This is a piece of ocean jasper. Ocean jasper is an orbicular jasper and it is no longer being mined. I don't know if, they, I think it just kind of ran out the material, but when you slab it, it has some nice really nice little nodules in it, little round circles, and it's very pretty, and it's fairly uncommon at this point, so I got myself a, a piece of it. And look, it has some really pretty crystals on the top too. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to slab this or if I'm going to just save it for the future as an investment. So stay tuned. I'm not absolutely positive. This is more Australian material. I'm not absolutely positive, but I think this is something that they call Noreen, Noreena Jasper. And just the colors on it are so pretty. Anyway, I'll double check and put the name up on the screen because I don't want to mislead you, but I sure like that chunk. Very cool. And I just love this. I bet you probably know what it is. It's called Mookaite. It is from Australia, and it is from Mooka Creek in Australia, which is why they call it Mookaite. And look at all of the different colors in this piece. It's a nice kind of rectangular s s rock, so I can just stick it in the stick it in the slab saw and just cut along and make nice, nice slabs out of it. This is a piece of tiger iron. Tiger iron is different from tiger eye maybe not quite the same chatoyance, but it sure is pretty and heavy too. Can't quite remember what this Jasper is called, but I'll look it up and then I'll tell you on the screen, but it is very pretty. I really kind of went crazy buying some Jasperlicious Jaspers at this show. This is gonna make some nice slabs as well. This is a chunk of petrified wood. I really need to write these things down when I buy them because I'm just not even sure what kind of petrified wood we're dealing with. I think maybe it's Arizona rainbow wood. I hope so because that's stuff I really like. These folks gave me a nice little bag for these geodes. And again, I'm not sure where these are from but we'll crack them open so I can, I think they've got a pink, in, a pink purple interior. So we'll crack one open and see what it looks like. Here's a bag of tumbled cabochons that I bought at a wholesale booth. Basically, I want to use these as 
blanks for doing polishing of cabochons and doming and polishing. And there's just such a great, great assortment of them. I felt like it was worth it. I think this was like $60, $70 maybe for this bag. And, uh, and so when they are made into actual cabochons instead of just tumbled ones, I think that will be worth it. Here's another thing we got at the hotel show, just some really pretty amethyst. I am going to be working on making some tumbling, tumbled stones available, and so I bought some of these to get started on that. It's awfully fun going through these because I actually have forgotten that I bought some of these. This is some fire agate that's kind of already pre, pre roughed so that you can see where the fire is. I should be able to make a couple nice pieces out of this one. This is what fire agate looks like on the other side. And then fire, ooh, look at that eye. Isn't that gorgeous? The pearly fire. That's really nice. My phone is having a hard time figuring out how to, how to focus on that because it's kind of dimensional. Here's another bag of assorted tumbled gem stones that are cut already into a cabochon's shape. They are all ovals, so those of you oval haters out there will be disappointed, but they are great for getting started with. Nice. Look at the polka dot. I think that's like a Dalmatian stone. <laughs> Some unikite. Some blue jazz, blue. Brazilian blue lace. Just a really nice variety. Here's another thing that I'm pretty excited about. These are agates from Botswana. You can see they all have this gorgeous shadow banding. and Some of them have amethyst inside of them. Quartz. Oh! But this is kind of basically what they look like. But then some of them you don't know what they look like because they're sort of pink on the outside and they, you can't see the banding. So probably if you cut this, it would have... Probably if you cut this, it would have banding, but you just never know. With rocks, sometimes they surprise you. Anyway, I bought these. I bought a bunch of this because I know that a lot of my viewers and a lot of my people that shop at my Etsy store don't have large saws. They just have like little tile saws. And I wanted to provide more of the stuff that is easily cuttable on that size saw. So I found these and I'm like, ooh, let's get this for the Etsy store. Isn't that beautiful? When I was at the Miners Co-op, I stopped at this fellow. His, his name is Oregon Rockhound or something like that. And he had Yawa nuts at his place. And... This one is a whole nodule, so you can't really can't really tell whether it's any good or not. So it's kind of a gamble. But I did see, come on, phone. I did see that it had it has some pattern in the front, has some pattern over on the other side. And so I'm hoping that maybe it goes all the way through. But this is the only one I got that was kind of like, well, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited. This one is a little bit more of a sure thing. You can see the beautiful opal just right there. And then on the other side, there's more. So it is possible that maybe it goes all the way through. I'll have to look up how to cut these because I've never had larger nodules of this stuff before. And then when you polish it, ew, what a mess it makes. It's all muddy and terrible, but absolutely worth it. Look at that. Isn't that something? Then I got some that's slightly smaller, but has this really cool crackly pattern here. And then it's got the beautiful reds and up on top here. So I think that the pattern actually, oh, look at that. I think that the pattern actually kind of goes around the edges. Oh man, I just saw, caught a little flash there. I'm really excited about this one as well. And then these are just some little ones. I love, love, love Boulder Opal. I actually kind of almost like it better than the regular, you know, the Lightning Ridge or any of that because it's, it's 
seems very organic, you know, it seems very natural. And it forms in these cracks, so you never have just a big chunk of opal. There's always other stuff with it as well, and I really like that. This is Purple Passion. And this must be, they must be kind of running short on this stuff because I, there was a whole big huge box of it last year at this at this rough vendor that I went to. And this year they didn't have it at all. I bought some smaller chunks of this so that I could, so that I could have it on my Etsy store. Basically that a lot of the stuff that I did was, was so that I could offer things to people who couldn't be there, who would like to have some really pretty stuff. So, Purple Passion. Here's another example. Really pretty. I guess I heard that the guy who owns this mine doesn't... Oh, good heavens. The guy who owns this mine doesn't care too much for the, the name Purple Passion, but it is, uh, it is definitely what it is called. Look at the shadow banding here. Gosh, that's beautiful. And so much variety. This is just a little tiny piece, but look at this. Isn't that something? This is some dinosaur gem bone. This is a bigger chunk of the Purple Passion. This is something that I bought so that I could slab it and have slabs available. I and also make things out of because it's so pretty! Isn't that interesting? So many, so many patterns and swirls. Wow. I'm loving it. I think I'm gonna have my work cut out for me with all this stuff. I bought a bunch of this beautiful purple and green fluorite, and I will probably try to tumble some. Flor tumbling fluorite is really tricky. I will try to cab some, again, same thing, and I will probably just list some so that everybody else can try the same. <laughs> I seem to like to drop things in the bowl. Look at that. I love the colors. You know, fluorite, I'm kind of a new fan. I didn't think that it had much of a point, but it grows in so many different ways, so many different habits, they call them, that it's just kind of fascinating. Another thing I picked up is several pounds of tumbling-sized sodalite, and I have, uh, I have a new machine that's gonna help me knock the edges off of this. So I'm going to do that and then offer it as kind of pre-shaped tumbling rocks so you don't have to spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on the rough grit, which just is so boring. So that's my plan there, along with making cool stuff out of it. Isn't that just a gorgeous color? This is a bunch of crazy lace agate. Again, I bought some kind of smaller nodules so that people could could share without having to have a slab saw. They can use it on their tile saw, but look at how pretty that is. Absolutely gorgeous. I love Crazy Lace. Example. I picked all of these out from the, from the bucket so that they all have patterns on them. That's what it looks like without being being cut or broken somehow. Isn't that ugly? And then you turn it over and look at what it really looks like. Very pretty. And bubbly. Ooh, some of these have a lot of quartz crystals on them. Which are pretty by themselves. But then you get down and look at this stuff. Holy moly. Look at that. I'm loving it. Every single one of these is different. Different colors, different patterns. 
Now, when I say shadow banding, that's what this is. If you look between these bands here, it actually has kind of a clear space it's filled with clear silica so that when you move it, see how the band over on the right there kind of shifts, you can actually, it's, it's kind of dimensional. Come on phone, I know this is hard. Very cool. Anyway, that's pretty close to the end of what I got from, oh no, I didn't show you the opals. Better get those out. And this was my birthday treat to myself. I bought these at, oh gosh, I can't even remember. It was the very last show that we visited. I love Ethiopian opals. The price was definitely right on these. They were a dollar a gram. And, you know, they've got quite a bit of sand in them and that kind of thing, but... The colors are so pretty, and when you cut these, you can make really nice ring stones out of them. Look at that one. The problem with these, of course, is that they're uh, hydrophane opals, which means that if you soak them in water, they will uh, <laughs> the color disappears for a while, and so it's a little tricky to to shape them because. Of course, you use water in that process, and so you end up with these kind of colorless nodules, and you have to just kind of trust that the color is going to come back. But it always has, so I suppose I can surmise that it always will. Anyway, that is my birthday present to me. So... That's a peek at the things we hauled home from Tucson this year. I was really, really impressed with the whole show, and I was glad to be able to be there. Thanks for joining me. If you want to share in the treasures, do check out my Etsy store, Katie Did Rocks. Subscribe if you haven't, and keep on doing.